the daughters of Christian the Ninth of Denmark married into some of the most powerful European monarchies in the 19th century. To this day, some of their descendants are monarchs of the United Kingdom, Norway and Spain. Let's dive into the lives of Alexandra, Dagmar and Tura of Denmark. Alexandra of Denmark was born on the 1st of December 1844 in the Yellow Palace in Copenhagen, Denmark. Her parents were Christian IX of Denmark and Louise of Hesse Castle. She had five siblings, Frederick, George, Dagmar, Tura and Valdemar. Growing up, she lived a very modest life and her father did not have a large income. In 1848, Christian VIII of Denmark died and his only son Frederick ascended the throne. Frederick had no children from two failed marriages and a succession crisis arose. Frederick ruled in both Denmark and Schleswig-Holstein where there were two forms of succession. In Denmark, both men and women could inherit although male preference primogeniture was in place. However, in Schleswig-Holstein, only men could inherit. In 1852, it was decided that Alexandra's father would be the heir. Alexandra and her family moved into Bernstorff Palace, and although their status had risen, they received no increase in their income. By the late 1850s, Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom and her husband, Prince Albert of Saxe Coburg and Gotha, were searching for a wife for their eldest son and heir, Albert Edward, Prince of Wales. Their eldest daughter, Crown Princess Victoria of Prussia, was enlisted by her parents in seeking a suitable candidate. Alexandra was not their first choice, as the Danes were at conflict with the Prussians over the territory of Schleswig-Holstein. However, eventually Alexandra was chosen as the only suitable candidate for their son. In 1861, Alexandra met Albert after Crown Princess Victoria introduced the two to each other. A year later, Albert proposed Alexandra and she accepted. Though they had only met a few times and didn't really know each other, they were wed on the 10th of March 1863 in St. George's Chapel. The English court was still in mourning for Albert's father, who had died in December 1861. So ladies were restricted to wearing grey, lilac and mauve, and only Alexandra's closest relations were invited to the wedding, which upset many of her Danish relatives, who were not invited. After her wedding, Alexandra went by the title of the Princess of Wales. By 1864, Alexandra's father was King of Denmark, her brother George was King of the Helens, her sister Dagmar was engaged to the Cervic of Russia, and Alexandra had given birth to her first child, Albert Victor, although he was more affectionately known as Eddie by the family. Alexandra and Albert would go on to have five more children, George, Louise, Victoria, Maud and Alexandra John. According to Queen Victoria's diaries, all of the children were born prematurely. However, it is more likely that Alexandra misled Queen Victoria on the delivery dates, so that the Queen would not be present during the births of her children. During the birth of Louise, Alexandra contracted rheumatic fever, which threatened her life. Though she recovered, she was left with a permanent limp. The German invasion of Schleswig-Holstein had a profound effect on Alexandra, who grew to greatly dislike Germany. She and her husband supported Denmark during the war, which was a point of contention for her mother-in-law, Queen Victoria, and her sister-in-law, Crown Princess Victoria. Alexandra was popular amongst the English. She appeared dignified, charming, and affectionate. She greatly enjoyed dancing, ice skating, and hunting, much to her mother-in-law's dismay. With her husband, Alexandra went on many international tours, such as tours to Ireland, Austria, Egypt and Greece. The Prince and Princess of Wales set up residence in Sandringham House and Marlborough House. Their marriage was mostly happy, although Albert didn't give his wife as much love and affection as she would have liked. 
They became closer when Albert almost died from typhoid fever in 1671 and their youngest son Alexander John died. Alexandra and Albert wanted privacy when their youngest son died, but Queen Victoria insisted on a period of court mourning and a funeral for the infant, which the press saw as a sickening mummery. Alexandra mostly looked the other way as her husband had liaisons with other women and was perpetually unfaithful to her. Throughout her life, Alexandra suffered from several physical disabilities. She suffered from progressive deafness, otosclerosis and a limp. When the ladies of her court and society at large saw that Alexandra had a limp, they adopted a similar limp in it as fashionable. Three years in the late 1870s, Alexandra remained separated from her two sons as her sons went on a worldwide cruise as part of their naval and general education. Alexandra showed herself to be an affectionate and loving mother who wrote regularly to them. In 1881, Alexandra and Albert Edwards travelled to Russia to represent Britain at the funeral of Alexander II of Russia and to comfort Alexandra's sister Dagmar, who became the Tsarina. Alexandra undertook many public duties for the Queen and became the public face of the monarchy along with her husband. In 1892, her eldest son, Eddie, Duke of Clarence and Avondale, died after contracting influenza. Alexandra fell into a deep mourning and had his room and possessions kept exactly as he had left them, similar to how Queen Victoria had reacted after her husband, Prince Albert's death in 1861. Queen Victoria passed away in 1901 and Albert Edward and Alexandra became the King and Queen of the United Kingdom. That same year, Alexandra and her husband cared for their grandchildren while her son George and his wife Mary went on an extensive tour of the British Empire. Days before the scheduled coronation, in June 1902, Albert Edward, now Edward VII, fell ill with appendicitis. The coronation was postponed so Edward VII could recover from his surgery. Alexandra stood in for the king during a military parade and the royal ascot races to avoid public alarm. In August 1902, the coronation was held and Alexandra and Edward were crowned together. Alexandra's duties changed little and she kept on the same servants when she became queen. In December 1903, Alexandra's woman of the bedchamber, Charlotte Knollis, saved the queen's life after her room began to fill with smoke. She roused Alexandra and brought her to safety. After Alexandra's father died, Alexandra and her sister Dagmar bought a villa in Denmark in order to retain their family links. They used it as a private getaway. Alexandra was denied access to her husband's papers and was excluded from some foreign tours and politics. In 1910, Alexandra attended a debate at the British House of Commons, becoming the first Queen Consort to visit the House of Commons. During a visit to her brother George I of Greece, her husband fell ill. Alexandra arrived back in England only the day before her husband died. On his deathbed, she nursed him and allowed his mistress Alice Keppel to visit. Albert died on the 6th of May 1910. Alexandra refused to allow his body to be moved and only after over a week did she agree to have his body moved. She moved out of Buckingham Palace to Marble House and retained Sandringham House until her death. Alexandra did not attend her son's coronation in 1911, which was customary. It was normal for a crowned queen not to attend the coronation of another king or queen. She continued to work for the monarchy. In 1918, her grandnephew, Tsar Nicholas II, and his family were assassinated, and she had her sister Dagmar rescued from Russia in 1919. Dagmar and Alexandra spent some time together. Throughout her senior years, Alexandra remained youthful in her appearance, but eventually the years caught up to her. From 1920, she suffered from partial blindness accompanied by profound deafness. Alexandra passed away on the 20th of November, 1925 from a heart attack. She lay in state at Westminster Abbey before being buried beside her husband in St George's Chapel in Windsor Castle. 
Maria Fedorovna, Empress of Russia, was born Princess Dagmar of schleswig holstein sonderburg glucksburg on the 26th of November 1847 at the Yellow Palace. She was the second daughter of King Christian IX of Denmark and Louise of Hesse Castle. From 1852, she was known as Princess Dagmar of Denmark. Dagmar grew up in a happy family environment. Her parents placed great emphasis on giving their children a simple upbringing, but also placed great emphasis on their royal duties. Dagmar was closest to her sister Alexandra, and they remained close throughout their adult lives. In 1864, Sarevich Nicholas Alexandrovich proposed to Dagmar, which she accepted. However, he suffered from ill health and passed away from meningitis on the 24th of April, 1865. His last wish was for Dagmar to marry his brother Alexander. Dagmar had already started to learn the Russian language and was preparing for her conversion to the Russian Orthodox religion. In June 1866, Alexander proposed Dagmar and they were wed on the 9th of November 1866, after Dagmar converted to the Orthodox faith. Dagmar took the name Maria Fedorovna. They moved into Anichkov Palace, where they would live for the next 15 years. They had six children together, Nicholas, Alexander, George, Xenia, Michael and Olga. Maria was popular in Russian society. She did not dabble in politics much and devoted herself to her family, charities and social activities. On the 13th of March 1881, Alexander's father, Alexander II, was assassinated in St. Petersburg. Alexander succeeded to the Russian throne and the imperial royal family moved to Gachina Palace, which provided greater protection. Alexander and Maria's coronation was also held in strict security. Maria and Alexander were extremely conservative and Maria sought to encourage foreign policy that favoured Denmark and not Germany. Maria was anti-German because of the annexation of the previously Danish Schleswig-Holstein duchies to Prussia in 1864. In addition, she tried to get Russia to develop relations with the United Kingdom where her sister was currently the Princess of Wales. Alexander and Maria often visited Denmark and enjoyed their time there because the atmosphere was more relaxed and they were under less stringent security. In 1885, Alexander bought a house near Friedensborg Palace and it became known as the Emperor's Villa. Maria owned the house until her death in 1928 when her daughter Olga sold the house. On the 1st of November 1894, Alexander died from nephritis. Their son Nicholas became the last emperor of Russia and married Princess Alex of Hesse on Maria's birthday, just eight days after Alexander was buried. Maria often offered advice to her son during the early days of his reign. Maria did not get along with her new daughter-in-law, Alex, or as she was known then, Alexandra Fedorovna. Maria was still considered Russia's first lady, and this strained the relationship between the old empress and the new empress. Maria was also more popular than Alexandra and enjoyed her role as first lady. As time went on, Maria's political views changed. She saw the discontent and revolutionary events that occurred in Russia and thought there should be a democratic representative government. However, Nicholas retained his absolute power and soon Maria stopped being his political advisor, replaced with his wife. When the Russian Revolution broke out during the First World War in 1917, Maria was in Kyiv. After Nicholas abdicated, she saw him one last time and after some reflection, she went to Crimea where members of the imperial family had several summer homes. Here she witnessed the October Revolution and in 1918 she received the news that her son and his family had been murdered. 
Being in Crimea became precarious. Nephew George V sent the warship HMS Marlborough to her. Twenty-five other Romanovs accompanied her over to England. After a short stay in London, Maria moved to Denmark, where she stayed in Amalienborg Palace for a time. She eventually settled in a holiday villa she and Alexandra had bought together in 1906. Maria's remaining years were overshadowed by the many deaths of her immediate family. Maria held out hope that her sons Nicholas and Michael, her daughter-in-law and grandchildren had survived the revolution. On the 13th of October 1928, Maria passed away and was interred at Roskilde Cathedral. She had wished that she would be buried beside her husband. In 2005, Queen Margaretha II of Denmark and the Russian President Vladimir Putin agreed, along with their governments, that Maria's wish should be fulfilled. Her remains were transported to St. Petersburg and interred next to her husband on the 28th of September 2006. Princess Thura, Crown Princess of Hanover, was the youngest daughter of King Christian IX of Denmark and Louise of Hesse Castle. She was born on the 29th of September 1853 at the Yellow Palace in Copenhagen. Shortly before her birth, her father was chosen as the heir to the Danish throne, so Thura was a Princess of Denmark from birth. Thura's mother had high hopes of a successful marriage for Thura. However, before any negotiations could occur, Tura fell in love with a Danish cavalry officer, Wilhelm Freeman Marscher. Her mother knew of Tura's interest, but considered it a harmless flirtation. However, Tura and Wilhelm had relations and Tura became pregnant. News of the pregnancy was restricted to the immediate family, and arrangements were made for Thura to be sent to Greece to stay with her brother George. She gave birth to a daughter on the 8th of November 1871 and the baby was adopted by a Danish couple. Marcia wanted to marry Thura, as did Thura, but due to his social status this was forbidden by the king. Distraught over losing Thura and the baby, Marcia took his life on the 4th of January 1872. It is not known how Tura reacted to his death, as there was no record of her reaction, but I can imagine she was devastated and heartbroken. Tura was a leading candidate for marriage with Prince Arthur, Duke of Connacht, the third son of Queen Victoria and brother-in-law of Tura's sister, Alexandra. Queen Victoria put a stop to any negotiations, as she thought a second British-Danish union would interfere with her pro-German leanings. Tura was also considered as a potential second wife of King Willem II of the Netherlands. However, due to him being in his 60s and a shameless womanizer, Tura rejected his proposal. In the winter of 1875, Tura travelled to the United Kingdom to spend Christmas with her sister Alexandra and her family. Also visiting at this time was Ernst Augustus, Crown Prince of Hanover. Although Hanover was annexed by Prussia and had no throne, and Ernst Augustus was not considered to be conventionally handsome, he was kind and easygoing and had a large fortune. Tura fell in love with Ernst Augustus. Apparently, he knew of her daughter and still wished to marry her. Tura's parents, along with Alexandra, arranged a meeting in Frankfurt between Tura and Ernst Augustus in early 1878, and they became engaged. On the 21st of December 1878, Tura and Ernst Augustus were married in Copenhagen. They moved into Slosh Cumberland and had six children together, Mary Louise, 
George Wilhelm, Alexandra, Olga, Christian and Ernst Augustus. Tiora struggled with her mental health during her marriage. It didn't help that her husband disliked gatherings and wasn't very social, which isolated the family. Nevertheless, the marriage was a happy one that lasted until Ernst Augustus' death in 1923. Although she was never a queen in an official capacity, Tura was the titular queen consort of Hanover as her husband had never renounced his rights to the throne. Tura was also the ancestor of King Constantine II of Greece and King Felipe VI of Spain. Tura passed away on the 26th of February 1933 and was buried beside her husband at their family mausoleum.